<clears throat> Hello. Uh, so today I'm actually going to talk about um, something that's gained a lot of momentum in the news recently, which is Chat GPT. And I personally am I'm a big fan of it. Um, I think there's a lot of utility in using this in data analytics for many of the front end business users that have questions they want to ask, you know, in simple English. For those that don't know Chat GPT, I'll describe it in layman terms. It's basically a computer model that understands English or concepts the way humans understand those concepts. So it's able to understand those concepts and also respond in kind in a way that a human can easily interpret. So for example, I'm going to show you guys a, this is a dashboard here where I am interested in understanding um, employee churn. So what I did was I created some fictitious data uh, to, and then on that fictitious data for employees, I used Click AutoML. That's another platform we have. Um, it's a machine learning um, capability we provide. Well, I was able to understand based on the patterns of prior employees, what is the profile of the current employees we have and meaning which of these employees do we currently have and what's the likelihood of these employees to either stay with us or leave right this is a big issue many organizations face especially like in economic swings like we're facing um you're very it's important to be able to like understand which employees are likely going to stay or leave so for example again this is all fake names so if i look at these employees this is a win uh radbon in his software development if i click on that employee and maybe i want to look at another employee marita i can see the reasons on the right side that they might choose to stay or leave our organization. So maybe one of the reasons they might stay is, to, is their salary. They are maybe underpaid, that they've not had that much vacation time, right? So those are some reasons why they might leave. So uh, re leading to higher churn rates, but they might stay because they're maybe in a in an organization that they like. So they're part of some department and they enjoy their work and so forth. So. That's going to be the idea. And of course, as you see, this is specific to each selection. So now what I would like to do is of looking at my analysis um, in click with AutoML. Now, can I do some cooler things by integrating a uh, user experience with chat to GPT? And what I'm going to do is I'll actually ask question and in real time, I'll have the chat GPT model respond using my data, right? So this data that is about employee churn, chat GPT is going to ingest that data, respond in kind with um, results that make sense to me. So I'm going to ask a simple question first, like what are the highest three base salaries for the employees we have? First, I don't have a field called base salaries, right? There's a, oh no, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So if I, if I put this in here, right, so I'm asking what are the highest three base salaries? There's no field here called base salaries, but I have a field called base salary. It's one word, but the cool thing with ChatGPT, it's smart enough to know that this means base salary, right? There's a field that has similar values and it's gonna understand that concept. So I'm gonna hit ask ChatGPT, I hit this button. Now I'm getting an answer in real time, right? So the highest three base salaries for the employees are 230,000, 232,000, and 249,000. Some things to keep in mind as caveats, as I can imagine people are going to be super excited about this tool, is it's garbage in, garbage out. So it's only as good as the data you provide. Secondly, also keep in mind that the data I am sending to ChatGPT, I, I believe ChatGPT or OpenAI, the company that started it, I believe they keep the data. So if you're looking to integrate this with sensitive data in your organization, maybe this is not the right time or tool yet. Or maybe you should come up with some other um, method for uh, you know, securely sending that data. So let me ask another question again. So just to, to kind of explore this power of the, of the tool. So I'm going to ask a question. How does vacation hours, hours balance vary by state? There is a field in my data model that has vacation hour balance. But again, it's not exactly like this. Meaning if I go on the vacation hour balance, if I type vacation, this is the actual field it's pulling from. You notice vacation hours balance is all 
concatenated to one long word but in ChatGPT, it's able to understand that this is referencing the same value and then office state again again this was in my data model it's one it's one word office state is hyphen is conjoined together but here it understands that this is the different states right i only included three states in my uh, analysis pa engine and md so now let's ask some much more deeper um questions you know so i'm going to ask is there a correlation between the days since vacation for an employee and how much they get paid All right let's think about that so is there a correlation between the days since vacation for an employee and how much do you get paid so i'm trying to understand employees that don't take that much vacations is there a correlation between those employees and their base salary right do people that work a lot get paid more you know another way of thinking you know another way of asking that question so he says no there does not appear to be a correlation between the days since vacation for an employee and how much you get paid. the data provider does not show any clear pattern between these two variables so it's doing just a little bit of mathematics, not a lot, but it's able to understand that uh, that response. Something also to keep in mind is I have added a bit of randomness in my response. So meaning every time I make a selection, the answer would be slightly, just very slightly different. Mm. Something you can add in your chat to GPT model. Again, based on the feedback I get from this, I will walk through how to actually create this integration so one more i'm going to ask one question is how does churn rate vary by the number of previous jobs and what is the median tenure for employees who have been separated in each category wow what a very convoluted question to ask again ChatGPT, this is where it shines it is gonna understand the concept or the intent of my question and then give me the answer in simple to understand English. All right, so look at this. So the no, the churn rate varies by the number of previous jobs. That's interesting, right? That makes some sense, right? You think that the, the, the mo higher the number of previous jobs someone has had or the lower, maybe there's some correlation between that and the likelihood of this employee leaving us. So here it says the churn rate uh, varies by the number of previous jobs with employees who have had more previous jobs having a higher churn rate interesting right you that, that would make some sense so i think the layman might see that and be like yeah that is correct like the more jobs you've had in your past right let's say past performance is indicative of future uh results or something like that so the more jobs you've had in the past the likelihood you are to you know leave your current job for another job so what this is saying is the churn rate varies by the number of previous jobs with employees who have had more previous jobs with a higher churn rate having a higher churn, <coughs> churn rate <clears throat> the median tenure for employees who have been separated in each category is as follows. No previous jobs, their average tenure is 445 days. Look at that. One previous job, 320 days. Two previous jobs, 330 days. Three or more previous jobs, 450 days. Hmm. Interesting fluctuation here. So it's saying uh, no previous jobs, you have a, a, um, you stay for a while. If you had one job before, you're likely to stay. If you had two jobs before, you're likely to stay longer. But if you had three or more jobs, so there's kind of this inflection point. If you've had three or more jobs before, then you go back to actually being a um, much more stable, and maybe is the one I'm looking for, much more stable employee. Right, I'm going to provide a warning here because I think uh, even with the momentum and, and hoopla behind ChatGPT, there's a note of caution. It is not very good at mathematics. So here I've asked the question, the same question I asked about how does churn rate vary depending on the number of jobs and so forth. You notice now the results are slightly different than the original response we saw, right? So we see now it's 445 days if you had no jobs, right? One job, 330, 300 days, um, two jobs was 320. Uh, then it had a different, res uh, different number. It was 320 for one job. And then if you have two previous jobs, it was 330 days. So you notice like the result you might get um, could vary significantly uh, if mathematics is, in, is involved. So just something to keep in mind as you try to use ChatGPT, I would say as a note of caution, don't rely on this as your to do the math 
part of your analytics. Use it for more of the exploratory understanding things in simple English. But if you want to understand, like, you know, what was our top sales, top, you know, so on and so forth, rely on click for those. But anyways, I thought this was useful. Um, one question I thought I should kind of, uh, one thing I thought I should also point out is, what if, you know, you ask a question relating to data that doesn't even exist in the, in the application itself? What would happen? So yeah, let's see if I can ask a question that's just, you know, silly. So I would say, how much has Tommy's, you know, Tommy's head increased since he has been recording this uh, video, right? So here, you just, you know, Let's see if there's an answer to this question. How much has my brain or head increased since I've been recording this video? Um, so it says Tommy's head size has not increased since he's been recording this video as this data does not contain any information about Tommy. Well, um, pretty cool. Just again, if you do were to ask a question where the data doesn't exist anywhere in the data model, um, still, I think, smart enough to like understand that. So I think that's all I had. Um, I hope you had uh, enjoyed this. And again, I'll look to come up with the integration how-to video depending on the response I get to this. Anyways, have a good day, y'all. Bye.